the Father, Son, and the Holy Spirit, one God, Amen. Because it's the Feast of the Ascension, I feel like it deserves a few words. So if you don't mind, I'll take a, I'll take a moment. Can we scroll back to the book of Acts, the reading of the book of Acts? I wanted to review this passage, just the beginning, uh, Acts chapter 1, verses 1 and 2. It says, The former tr uh, treatise have I made, O Theophilus, of all that Jesus began both to do and to teach until the day in which he was taken up. I think this is one of the most fascinating and meaningful verses in Scripture. And it's oftentimes passed by as introductory. We know that St. Luke wrote the Gospel of St. Luke. And then he also wrote the book that we call The Acts of the Apostles. And most Christians, if you were to ask them, I want to know about the life of Christ. I want to know about what he did. I want to know about what he taught. Which of these two books would you go to written by St. Luke? You would go to the gospel. St. Luke wrote down with his own hand both of these books. And in the gospel, we hear about the conception, the birth, the life, his miracles, we hear about the crucifixion, we hear about the death, we hear about the resurrection, and now we get to the end of the Gospel of St. Luke. And for many people, they say, well, there it is. There's the whole story. That's everything that Christ did and everything that Christ taught. And we go to the book of Acts to find out what other people did, what they did later. But look at what St. Luke says at the very beginning of the book of Acts. He said, Most excellent Theophilus, in the former book, I wrote about what Jesus began to do and to teach. In other words, the conception, the birth, the life, the death, the resurrection of Christ is only the beginning. Those are just the things that he began to do. Everything that he preached while on earth, those are things that he began to preach. He just started. That's not the whole story. That's just the first chapter of the things that Christ does and he teaches. The implication here is, now, St. Luke is writing the second book. It's the book of Acts. If the first book was what Christ began to do and teach, then what can we conclude about the book of Acts? the things that Christ continues to do and teach. And sure enough, what do we see? We see the deacons that are set apart in Acts chapter 6, and one of them is named Stephen. And after Stephen comes, uh, becomes a deacon, and he's preaching the truth, and he's teaching the truth, our Lord Jesus Christ shows up. And when we see we see Stephen is stoned to death because of St. Paul or Saul of Tarsus. Stephen is put to death for Christ. And St. Stephen in the book of Acts sees the heavens open up and he sees Christ. But he doesn't see him sitting at the right hand of God or standing to receive his first martyr. Sorry, he, he is standing to receive his first martyr after the resurrection and ascension to receive St. Stephen. That's something Christ is doing after the fact. But is this stuff just in heaven? No. Because a couple of chapters later, we read about Saul of Tarsus, who later becomes St. Paul, and ends up writing two-thirds of the New Testament. He had watched over approvingly while they were stoning St. Stephen to death, and now he was on this war path with venom and vengeance. He was going to persecute. He was going to torment. He was going to kill. He was going to do that to anyone who dared name the name of Christ. And on the road to Damascus, what happens to St. Paul, or sorry, to Saul? Does Jesus let him go about his own business? No, he is blinded. Who blinds him? Christ. Who talks to him? Christ. What does Christ say? He says, Saul, Saul, why are you persecuting my people? 
Is that what he says? No. He says, Saul, Saul, why are you persecuting me? When they're throwing stones at St. Stephen, who are they throwing stones at? Christ. Remember what Christ said. Inasmuch as you have done it to the least of my brethren, you have done it to me. So when St. Stephen was being stoned to death, they were stoning Christ. When the apostles were preaching, who was preaching? Christ. We see the apostles at the gate called Beautiful. And there is this man who was lame for 40 years. We know this story. And remember, he was just begging for gold. He was begging for money just to get food to get him through the day. We see similar people as we pass to work or go to church. Just give me some food while, to get me through the day. Give me some money to help me. And remember what the apostle says. Silver and gold, I have none but that which I give to you. In the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, rise up and walk. And they lifted him up and his feet became strong. And after 40 years, suddenly he was able to dance and to move. This is recorded in Acts chapter 3. It's very interesting, the timing of it. Do we realize that after there was years that Christ himself walked by this man and did not heal him? The time wasn't right. Jesus was going to heal him at the right time through his apostles. After he had already ascended into the heavens. Our Lord could have healed this man while he was still on earth. Who knows many hundreds of times that he was passing through this man in and out of the temple. He walked right past him. Maybe he asked Judas to pull a coin out of the treasury and to put it in this man's cup. But healing, not yet. Jesus would heal that man, but it would be through his apostles. And so when we read the book of Acts, we're not reading what, about what Jesus' people do. We are reading about what Christ himself does. The apostles even testify this when they say, Do not think it is of our own power that we did this, that we healed this man. No, this man was healed by, and they give glory to Christ. They give glory to the risen Lord Jesus Christ. This is recorded in Acts chapter 3, verses 11 through 16. Every healing that you see in the book of Acts is another thing that is done by Christ. Every apostolic teaching, every godly teaching that you see in the book of Acts is that teaching of our Lord Jesus Christ. Every persecution against, against God's people in the book of Acts, that's a persecution against Jesus himself. And this is the mystery of the body of Christ. Remember what St. Paul says in 1 Corinthians chapter 10. Is not this cup a participation in the blood of Christ? Is not this bread a participation in the body of Christ? We are all one body, for we are partake of the one bread. St. Paul is saying, you are what you eat. We eat the body of Christ. You are the body of Christ. So many of us think, oh, it would be wonderful to have Christ physically here with us. I want to hear what he has to say. I want to hear what he teaches. Not what other people say, not what other people want. I want to hear him talk. I want to hear him serve. But guess what? His body is here. Anything you do to hurt the body of Christ, you have done to hurt Christ himself. You have attacked the Lord and our Savior himself. And we might say the same thing that he said. He might say this to us the same thing that he said to Saul. Why are you persecuting me? Daniel, why are you persecuting me? Oh, I wasn't persecuting you, Lord. I was just picking on one of the people. I was just picking on someone in the body of Christ. Not you. I would never do that. In the same way, if you serve in love and humility, one of your brothers, one of your sisters in the body of Christ, you guess what? You serve him personally. You serve him himself. Have you always wanted the opportunity to have Christ 
come over to your house to have dinner with you? Well, invite someone over. Have someone to eat with you. Get together with someone. That's how we serve Christ, by serving each other. That's also how we hurt Christ, by hurting each other. If you want to serve Christ, serve your wife. Don't do things waiting for her to act first. Same thing, if you want to, if you want to serve Christ, serve your husband. Don't wait for him to show you love before you act. Give liberally. Give to Christ himself. We are deceived if we think that it's possible to turn our backs to on our brother and our sister in Christ and yet remain friends to Christ himself. If we are all one, there is one body. There are not two bodies or three bodies or 30,000 bodies. There is one body of Christ. And if you're part of that, that means however you treat somebody else in that body is how you are treating Christ himself, good or bad. If you want to love Christ, if you want to serve Christ, then love and serve the person that you see next to you. Serve the person in your own home without waiting for anything in return. Give sacrificially. Christ has ascended into the heavens. And I think that God would say to us the same thing that the angel said to the men who saw him go up. Men, why are you just standing here looking up into the heavens? Don't just stand around looking up thinking that. Don't think that, well, I'm just going to wait for him to come back. I'm going to be waiting for a long time. We don't know how long it will be before that he returns the same way that he ascended. If you're looking for Christ, then why are you standing there looking to the sky? We need to get busy. We need to look at each other. We need to look in each other's eyes. Serve one another. There you'll see Christ, not in the heavens. So don't just stand there looking up to heaven, wondering if he's going to come back. But we need to get busy. So we go out into the world among our brothers and our sisters and among those in the world who you pray eventually will become your brothers and sisters in Christ. And in so doing, that's where you find him. That's where you find Christ, present here on earth even now. And glory be to God forever. Amen. Amen.